here in this in this space. And I'm told by Dominic, really, this is the first time that there's going to be a dance and a poetry reading in, uh, in Cork. So I'm hand over that to the Los Gecko. Many albums to their name. Fathers, 
nobody's hands have fought us into fans from birds that never went to we escape stormy wind and exploit them by the stealth and we chose them by the wealthy so the wheelhouse remains empty this art stern makes us faster and this slow burn makes us U-turn and we return for the sun to rebuild our new fence to stitch up golden lands from bison chasing wet to the lowlands kill our doors and the souls that Drowned in water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah.
Yet it embraces emotion, as in the following lines from the poem Through Slatted Shutters, December 1963, in which Anton tells of his family's eviction at Gunpoint from the Nicosia home. We left by the kitchen door, passing under the orange tree. My father, looking up, said, No other oranges will ever taste as sweet. In another poem in the collection entitled In That Dawn's Early Light, 1974, the poet recalls a day unlike any other. Absurd, the surreal imagery a dirty trick of the mind to tell delicately how deadly parachutes fill the sky. The longest distance between two places is a prosy metron poem, high going in which the poet laments what he has lost. I know the picture is a memory I cannot have, yet it possesses me. I know the picture is a memory I cannot have, yet it possesses me. Many of the poems in the collection contribute to a complex layering that underpins questions of identity, being, and belonging. Staying on is one such poem. Mikis told me, and I believe that the lichen blotches crusted on some stones was the blood shed by brave Cypriot heroes to free our homes. There are many memorable poems in falling into place. I was particularly struck by In Honor of Mavash Sabbat and Kaid's Nicosia, both of which express a yearning for a unified world in which empathy reigns. I imagine every high flying kind mastering the wings, to be John Burke's, Dizzy Gillespie, bebopping around the world, his skywards pointing trumpet, reaching for the high note, a prayer for the Hege, a world without passports. And then there's Angel of History, which is a reworking of Walter Benjamin's essay on Paul Clay's painting of the same title. Anton offers a clear assessment of a world of fire conflagration, yet finds hope where Benjamin the refugee himself saw only despair. The opening and closing stanzas illustrate these contrasting mindsets and hint at a direction Anton's next collection might explore. See his angel of history, with wings outspread, turn to face the past, and stare open mouth at the single catastrophe. Under the piling ash that grows skywards, minute by minute, we sift for the debris vestiges of hope. In depositions, Anton takes an entirely new approach in terms of poetic form. He opens with a handful of triolet poems before engaging with the haiku and similar forms. In these poems, Anton leaves behind a world of the classics and fine art that emerges from time to time and falling into place and directs his attention towards the dispossessed. Summer's once, at last blue sky without cracks. Summer's once, at last blue sky without cracks. That position tells the story of an all too familiar human journey, the journey of loss. In the following haiku, Anton writes of sifting through debris. A child face down in the shallows, lying in the sand. A child face down in the shallows, lying in the sand. Anton's imagery is vivid and clear. Lights melting into water. Immigrant boats. Lights melting into water. Immigrant boats. The open form haiku and simile 
used in depositions, allows Anton access to a universal language and imagery. Distant thunder, black smoke from the village fringing the hills. Distant thunder, black smoke from the village fringing the hills. And again, dry mouths hovering around the empty pot, the thin syllables. Dry mouths hovering around the empty pot, the thin syllables. Just the thought that this symbol would find a home in the family museums in Ireland. Shakespeare, Ford, Reed, Arden, Lewis, Shire are just some of the poets who have added to the canon of refugee and displacement writing. Now in depositions, Anton Floyd, whose family's history is woven from a long story of displacement, bravely has his say. Depositions is an exciting and relevant collection. There is empathy with the unnamed people and places, and occasionally we feel a delicate touch, though for the most part the poet's voice is urgent and inescapable. Only voices unchecked by razor wire. Only voices unchecked by razor wire. A selection of the poems has been translated into languages widely spoken by the exile. In this way, too, the plight of the dispossessed finds its rightful place on the page. Today, please join me in giving Anton Floyd a rousing limit perception as he reads from falling into place and depositions. Thank you. Right. I'd like to read. Uh, a, a, a few poems from Falling Into Place, and I thank Dominic for believing in it. And uh, some you've heard already uh, referred to by, by Jim here. And as I was born in, in, in Cairo and raised in Cyprus, I'm very much aware that this is the 50th anniversary of the Turkish invasion of the island. And um, there is still a ceasefire. There's no peace. There's just a ceasefire. So technically speaking, the country's still at war. <coughs> and um, I want to read the poem in that dawn's early light, 1974, just to remember. And I will also read another poem uh, from Depositions that deals specifically with that in invasion. In that dawn's early light, 1974. In that dawn's early light, a set readied as for a mask, cue cicadas and bird song. Across a terracotta roofscape, the view from Nicosia to the Mesoorian plain was a canvas stretched, imbued with glowing amber and men were drifting on it like thistledown on the air. Absurd, this surreal imagery, a dirty trick of the mind to tell delicately how deadly parachutes filled the sky. My family has a long history of displacement and um, Dating from 1860, uh, my great grandfather, uh, Commander Rizgamba, uh, who married a Maltese woman, Teresa, uh, who were living in Mount Lebanon, and they were quite wealthy uh, merchants. And there was a pogrom of the um, Maronite community in 1860, which resulted in the massacre of 12,000 uh, Maronites in Tyre and Sidon, which is now in the Lebanon. And my great-grandfather was uh, managed to, uh, to survive that, although the conflagration spread from Tyre and Sidon all the way up into Aleppo and Syria, and the entire Maronite community 
and Korta in uh, Aleppo was massacred. And the, the pictures that we have of Mariupol and of Gaza at the moment with all the, the, the building, the infrastructure completely destroyed is exactly what happened there. Uh, the, the family pitched up in um, Egypt and in Palestine. And um, through various um, other family uh, incidents, uh, the Palestinian family um, lost everything. They're a very wealthy family, um, the Butajis. They lost everything uh, in Haifa after the Nakba. There were hoteliers and agents for um, His Majesty's voice, you know, the record players, and, and um, uh, they ended up in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, the, uh, the Egyptian family, my immediate family, uh, in the 1950s, their businesses, uh, there were ship chandlers in Portside, their business was nationalized by NASA, and they lost everything. Uh, my grandmother had a hotel in Alexandria, she lost that. Guest house in Cairo, she lost that. And we ended up in Cyprus. And we ended up in Cyprus in the middle of a war of independence, during which my two brothers were wounded. They're much older than I am. They're 20 years older than I am. And um, we loved the island, even though my, my two brothers were, um, were wounded very seriously. Uh, my parents never uttered um, an anti cypriot word, and certainly not within my hearing, and I learned Greek in the kitchen of my Cypriot friends and neighbors. And in 1963, because the Brits left behind an unworkable constitution, uh, in which no laws were passed, uh, there was a great deal of frustration, and then intercommunal strife broke up broke out, and uh, we were living in Constantia in northern Nicosia in 1963, December 1963, and um, there were shootings and killings. Our family doctor who lived uh, a block away, his family was massacred by uh, Greek Cypriot um, national guardsmen, and um, we ended up um, refugees once again. And we are forced from the house at gunpoint. So I'll just read this poem through slatted shutters that Jim mentioned. The days before Christmas were clear and cold. It was all week. Time enough to perfect corn on my racing green rally bike, the pedals skimming the tarmac. That morning with Mickey's and Errol promised the art of look no hands riding. Sunlight poured through slatted shutters. Shadows raked the walls. The pattern as defined as the bullet holes on the veranda from the night's street fighting. And I slept through it all. The strafing of houses, the cackle of gunfire, the shootings and reprisals. Cypriot neighbors, Turk and Greek, cowering in our basement. Through the slatted shutters, I saw them, Turkish militiamen, a moving line owning the field. They came to commandeer our house, allowing us our last breakfast at gunpoint. The weight of my father's hand, I feel its imprint on my shoulder, the fret my mother carried. That December morning, we left by the kitchen door, passing under the orange tree. My father, looking up, said, no other oranges will ever taste as sweet. And I saw at that moment clearly how the ripe oranges gleamed, blossomed, and fruit on the same tree. That's the wonderful thing about citrus at Christmas time. You have fruit and then you have the blossom at the same time. Um, we uh, were uh, fortunate enough to, to find accommodation 
and the southern part of Nicosia. And uh, we were in a hotel called the Crown Hotel. And I overheard my parents talking. And I quote directly what they said. And then I'll read the poem that followed. The he here is my father and my mother is the she. You're a reckless woman, he said. We can't just leave them in Neapolis, she replied. We have to fetch them south. I'll badge the car with a Red Cross flag. They wouldn't harm a woman and a boy. So the boy was me. I was taking it as her, her shield. And uh, we made three trips. And um, I have to say that Mikis, who was Greek Cypriot, and Errol, old car, was Turkish Cypriot. They were my best friends growing up. I learned how to swear in Turkish from Errol. And I learned to speak Greek fluently from Mikis. And um, Mikis's father was a police sergeant in uh, the uh, Greek Cypriot. And part of the constitutional arrangements was parity of esteem. So that if you had a Greek Cypriot president, you had to have a Turkish Cypriot vice president. If you have a Turkish Cypriot sergeant of the police, you have to have a Greek Cypriot sergeant of the police. And there was no meritocracy, it was a quota system as such. So um, we went back to Cyprus as a family, and I took my uh, second son, Piers, to show him where we grew up. And we passed the Lever Palace Hotel, which is known as Checkpoint Charlie. It's the, a crossing point from north to south. And sometimes the border's open and sometimes it's closed, depending on the political climate. So we're going into northern Nicosia from the south. A stone's throw from here, at a makeshift roadblock, manned with guns, the ice factory on our right, every window shattered, a loud young Turk, edgy for revenge, threatened my mother, pressing a knife against her neck as if he'd draw a crescent moon across her throat. Between sobbing sisters, Mickey sat in the back seat, clutching his leather football. His mother crossed herself, praying in a frantic Greek. If anger bangs behind the eyes like a bag of blood and terrors a suffocating veil of black, when mother refused to unlock her door, her knuckles grip, courage at that moment turned bone white. I know now what crisis means, words like balance and knife edge, but then it was the wince and flame of wild and startled eyes. Perhaps it was the car badged with a red cross flag, some women and two boys, but a uniformed arm at last waved us tensely on. Here at the Lydra Palace, all was relief and dread. My mother sat in silence. Blood was on her collar, staining as it spread. So um, when Avon was born, uh, we decided that I said to my wife, we know, um, I know Ireland, you know Ireland. Let me take you to where I grew up and um, show you. And we went back and, so, and settled. We spent 15 years back on the island. Caroline loved it. And uh, for the first month of our being there, we never ate at home because all the people that my mother had brought from the south to the north, Greek Cypriots, Armenians, expatriates of all come. Um, they all invited us for meals and we put on a lot of weight in that. <laughs> um, I think at this point uh, I want to, to say uh, I want to read just one poem from Depositions and then uh, I want 
to show you a, a short film by Tanin Torabi, uh, who is uh, Iranian and a dancer. Um, in practicing her art, uh, she, her life is in mortal danger. And um, this film that we're going to show, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, but I'm going to read a monologue here. Uh, it's called The Ghost of That Gadfly. And uh, it's almost a found poem. It's dedicated to A.A., Artemis Antonio, who is a librarian and an artist who's living in, um, in France now. Uh, but all Greek Cypriots have to do military service. And uh, he did his 26 months military service. And he was just about to be discharged when the Turkish invasion happened. And uh, he got caught up in fighting around Famagusta on the east coast. And uh, it was pretty horrific from what I gather. And uh, he tells me the story. He was taken as a prisoner of war. And um, he was uh, released in the first exchange of prisoners of war. Uh, there were 3,300 other prisoners of war that were filmed by the Red Cross in the POW camps who never returned, and they were missing. And um, the Turkish uh, government denied that they ever existed. So the ghost of the gadfly, the gadfly being um, a fly that stings, that used to sting Socrates and he used to say that asking questions, difficult questions, is the kind of thing. I'm a librarian now. I was just a boy. I had done my stint in the National Guard and was about to be discharged when, just my luck, the invasion happened. It's not easy to talk about these things, but bear with me. I have just one thing to say. I was separated from my unit Confused by the night fighting, close combat, white of the eyes stuff, when noise becomes total. I was part of a deadly mine, a battle spasm from which you wake with the stench of blood and burn in your nostrils. That smell, the horror of it, never goes. There are no words for this. At dawn, I was alone between villages. Soon vultures would be circling. They follow the dogs of war. Always, they feast on our miseries when no one is, buried, is there to bury the dead. In that early light, the northern mountains looked closer than I knew they were. No moisture in the air to create distances. Light can be as deceiving as words, deeds. The blue skies are a shell. They carry loss. Heroic speeches driven by adrenaline and nationalism count for nothing when luck runs out. Defend your position at all costs sounds good and patriotic on the parade ground, especially to the tune of a marching band, all spit and polish and gleaming flags. But when everyone around you is dead, other urgencies take hold. Things like live another day, as Archaeologos advised in his pacing meters. He threw away his shield. He ran to save his life. What did he care about that shield? To hell with it. He'd buy another just as good. What use Orion's boasts, ready to kill anything that moves? He roams the night sky today as he did that night, his sword tucked into his belt. Every night I follow his skywalk, what use his bronze club? He never saw Gaia's scorpion coming. What's he left with, huh? Cirrus, a companion dog to follow him, and us with bad luck, bad luck and choking heat. The war? This war was small fish by world standards, but proxy wars always are. It's easy from far away to raise you to the ground, 
to be blind to nuance, to the delicate texture of skin and bone, not to hear the agonies when countries burn. That day on the road, I tried to march, but stumbled. I wept for what I'd seen, for what I had to do. My home, my country, and lost. This small island everyone loves had become again a strategic killing field. I felt before I heard the rumble of tanks. Like thunder, the drone of bombers. But this was constant. Fear grips the gut and like a fanatic won't let go. Something that visceral racks the body makes it taut one raw nerve. My only thought was hide, crawl into a culvert, bury the ideas of rats, vipers, scorpions, rabid dogs, better them than trigger-happy soldiers on edge. It's impossible, though, to share a secret place, any place, with hornets. They stung me, all over. I writhed in pain. A real poor Tom, a bedlam vagabond, wild, berserk by the side of the road. My skin, my whole being on fire. There were no words for this either. It, I wanted oblivion, an enemy bullet, someone to pull the trigger. Time. Thoughts are a mirage of words I can't be sure of. All I know is later on when I came to, all I could sense were sepulchral shapes against the sun. Then a medic asking me in Turkish if I wanted su, water, su. Luck changes. It changes everything. I should have feared him and the other boys with him. I should hate them all for all they'd done, for all I'd seen. But then I would have to hate myself and my own for what we'd done. Nothing to build on there. Luck changes, yes. I'm one of the lucky ones. A Turk saved my life. Because of him, I returned after the war. Every day I feel all those hornet stings. It is as if the ghost of that gadfly, Socrates himself, is goading me to say, because I mourn the missing and the dead, my only enemy is war. It's war I hate. So you get a, an idea of what they, they want to do. So we're going to sh close the shutters and we're going to show you two, two short films. They're five minutes each. One is um, by Amy Torani. We met when she was doing an MA in contemporary dance at Europe. And uh, she has subsequently gone on uh, to win over 20 international prizes for her dance films. And most recently, this month, at the Amsterdam Festival of Dance. And um, she's an extraordinary, courageous woman. Uh, the reason I, I like showing them when I make the presentation of her. Uh, on depositions is because we're free as artists to practice our art. She could be killed for doing, for doing this. And then the following film is by Ara Devine, another young uh, filmmaker who's made a film uh, questioning Irish identity.
그러니까 뒤에 대 
and uh, so I, I feel very, very drawn to that particular project. Goodness knows what our genes are going to be. <laughs> my other daughter, um, my other son is married to an Eritrean woman, and uh, her parents met and fell in love uh, on a refugee camp in South Sudan, where they've been languishing for 14 years before Muti Myrtle arranged with them to go uh, to Germany. So I, it's kind of, it's in, in the family. Uh, this film is by Ara Devine, he's from Donegal, and um, he made this piece when he was um, studying at NCAD, uh, and it draws attention to direct provision and the way in which you know, are the new Irish, how are they going to be recorded in, in history? It's quite, uh, it's quite an interesting statement, I'm sure you. Thank you. Neil Ann Chinchin, Marduk Chinchin Fan. By Ken the Nakhed, Shan Fochal Adola Merskol. Honnick Sher Ashkan Machivna Lejeni. and tale of Yagamanshin. Near Hanik she hugum go haska gelige. Ni higme and puncha hun gelige alawarch. Kilgak dinna goro shemarav. Akstadra me gajian. Rinime jarmada hijis modin change in ye moartest. Ni fejula mea you saw jiwad na lehinda sha. Tamakut gramadu fasach. Achtai sagam gafol kupla fokal. Svar gelig of rishta na berla klishta. Isquivin lom na kartlin. Na tafaja dandinia vian shofado. Kuvij majia din ar show maranga urawan. Vishe ashta kun nadini sha akal, nadini avian sha riv rugume, hen sort dini avian, hen sort bring lodge of yaku. Nor a honig me ar dus vishe in takfur, agus gakor avian greenic tatnan vishe doch reche, vishe kusul garosha seren ashunta. Baed na sport rodig and a viesta. Shkiven loma grechimpel na parka. Egg brisu a stocker in a postiella. V sport marilagoon. On pubble, mas rode a nachra to conglacu part, v to markivia. Squiven lom egg fake in geran clairshock, snahachna egg sula, arrogant jock. On symbol then sail on shaw, connus around a noti diffrul. Ach marchij den instrum kena. Had a hillin shech on a vehmar erinok, and will she on changa, on relegun, on bia, can size dinner a vi abelta on tillin shaw a yen of marvalia. Ani a vekar al halem in wasanne, chemsetne fi gorfa wahde, hat tel tenefus chansa ab, beatne sar be aid, u hesse mebaka edne rare al kosor. مكان صغير ضيق لا هنا ولا هناك الكاميرات كانت تراقبنا بالدخول وبالخروج وبالروحة وبالرجعة من المدرسة وكنت أنا أفكر هم راح يستعملون الصور ويراووها الأحد بالصفوف هل أنا جزء من قصة أرلندا لو أنا فجشي مخفي أو منسي كانت ثلاث وجبات أكل باليوم بس مو شي إحنا نحبه جسمنا كان يتخذه لكن 
الحب حضراتنا كانت محرومة حتى أكون جزء منهم اضطريت أفقد جزء مني ما قدرتوا تتعلمون فد شيء من عندي ما عندي فد شيء يتعلموا مني كل اللي نقدر نسوي كان بس نسجل نحتفظ ونجمع احتمال حتى يكون مفيد لأحياء ذكرى من الزمن ذكرى احتفال وجودنا في هذه الجزيرة
speak out of the problem in English and so that we do it in the Farsi class. So let's come. On the foreshore, wreaths of seaweed left by waves. Jolbak hai dayayi, moj rande be sahel, an jolbak hai khosh shode. Jolbak hai dayayi, moj rande be sahel, an jolbak hai khosh shode. Europe, the serrated edge, mapping the sea. Europa. قاره با چاقو مرز های تیز منتظر هست تا کند هر پناه جو را ریز ریز اروپا قاره با چاقو مرز های تیز منتظر هست تا کند هر پناه جو را ریز ریز cries of relief no translation needed Beach arrivals. Geriye ve naleye mastumi ve sahel residegan rao tercüme iniz. Geriye ve naleye mastumi ve sahel residegan rao tercüme iniz. Tidal shift. Stranded in a rock pool. A child's shoe. Ari fotade be godali dar sakhre kafsh kudati bish nist. Ari fotade be godali dar sakhre kafsh kudati bish nist. Over the border, hope is a sin. Forgive us. آن سوی مرزها جایی که امید داشتن گناه است ببخشید ما را آن سوی مرزها جایی که امید داشتن گناه است ببخشید ما خیلی and to read for us in German. <laughs> Interestingly, I, and I asked people to choose, to go through, there are 120 of these tosets, to choose uh, any of them that resonated with them. And this particular group of individuals have not, there's no duplication. <laughs> Forced from my home, a stone in my pocket, ballast. Aus meiner Heimat vertrieben, ein Stein in meiner Tasche, ballast. Aus meiner Heimat vertrieben, ein Stein in meiner Tasche, ballast. No bridge can bear the weight of broken hearts. Keine Brücke kann das Gewicht gebrochener Herzen tragen. Keine Brücke kann das Gewicht gebrochener Herzen tragen. Nowhere else to go. I wither every day on your doorstep. Man kann nirgendwo anders hin. Ich verkümmere jeden Tag auf deiner Türschwelle. Man kann nirgendwo anders hin. Ich verkümmere jeden Tag auf deiner Türschwelle. Once upon a time, when you believe that, I will too. Es war einmal. Wenn du das glaubst, tue ich es auch. Es war einmal. Wenn du das glaubst, tue ich es auch. Mother tongue. Words I can't translate, exhaled breath. No 
Muttersprache, Wörter, die ich nicht übersetzen kann, ausgestoßener Atem. Muttersprache, Wörter, die ich nicht übersetzen kann, ausgestoßener Atem. Dankeschön. in direct provision centers in Cork, uh, County Cork and Cork City. And um, we also uh, befriended and looked after two African Congolese boys uh, who were in direct provision. And uh, so I, going down and listening to their stories and you know, channeling my own uh, experiences and their experiences is how these depositions came about. And um, I would go down, I'd read them in French, translate them in French, particularly for the Congolese uh, people, and they were saying, well, you know, my language is Lingala, and other people say. And so the idea emerged uh, to translate uh, into the other languages. My original intention was to translate only into Irish because where we live there's the famine history, there's a cochon at the back of our house uh, where um, Griffith's evaluations have recorded uh, 70 souls who all perished in the, um, in the famine. And uh, the back of our farmhouse there's a boreen that they must have walked down to get down to the poorhouse. And, Try to get to Skibbereen, down to Baltimore to get a boat or something of that nature. But they all perished. And I asked my dear friend Joseph Watson if he would translate them into Irish uh, for me. And he said, I can't do it. I've got a monograph that's coming out that's on um, Ulster Scots and Scots Gaelic. And I can't, I don't have the time, but send it to me anyway. A week later, he translated them all. <laughs> uh, and he's a professor emeritus of Celtic studies in. Um, UCD. One of the languages that didn't get translated was Maltese. <laughs> and I regret that because so much of my blood going through my veins is uh, Maltese. But wonderful Katerina got hold of this and she's translated a few of these poems into um, Maltese. And it's a great pleasure to invite her to come. She's the most wonderful glass artist. <laughs> Upsetting those sunset hills, hazed blood red. In Quetanti dat loliet, ta in Zulil Shemf, Ahmad Del, in Chaitra. In Quetanti dat loliet, ta in Zulil Shemf, Ahmad Del, in Chaitra. This story forged on the anvil, this rasping file. Then historia is so war for Ilinquina, Dan Ilima Tadosh. Then historia is so war for Ilinquina, Dan Ilima Tadosh. <laughs> There is no good thing about the war in Ukraine, other than the fact that we have made friends with some wonderful Ukrainians. And uh, interestingly, when I made a presentation not so long ago uh, in uh, UCC, there were students who volunteered to read. One was a Greek Cypriot. Another was a Turkish Cypriot. 
and there they were. And uh, it was just a magical moment for the two of them together to read these poems and to understand their common humanity. Um, we have a wonderful Russian friend who's living in the States, and she's a trauma therapist. And uh, she lived not very far from Mariupol, um, and uh, was completely perplexed by what was happening there. And she responded uh, to, and then um, when I asked some uh, Ukrainian friends if they would like to translate them, they translated and placed the same poems uh, into Ukrainian. And then through um, serendipitously, uh, I've always wanted to find different ways of expressing the human story uh, through the arts. And darts are something that I've always wanted to, to find, and hence Tanning was a good friend. And, um, it was wonderful to come across Anastasia and to invite her to, to do that. And she also kindly agreed to read some of the poems in Ukrainian. Uh, we've learned a lot about uh, Ukrainian history, the Holodomor and the famine and the troubles that are so close to the Irish experience. Um, and um, so I'm delighted to meet you and I'm delighted that you Clasping, then letting go the stone road. Все, що ми маємо схопити, а потім відпустити, ґрунтова дорога. Все, що ми маємо схопити, все, що ми маємо схопити, а потім відпустити, ґрунтова дорога. Forced from my home. A stone in my pocket, ballast. Выгнанный из моей батьковщины, камень у моей кишени, ballast. Выгнанный из моей батьковщины, камень у моей кишени, ballast. Swallows, transgressing borders, the welcome migrants. Ластівки перетинають кордони, бажані мігранти. Ластівки перетинають кордони, бажані мігранти. A childhood shelved out of reach. Дитинство відкладене, недосяжне. Дитинство відкладене. This photo, that day we walked out past ourselves. Riding on flyways, birds flee toll free. In Oja et Fali, Elian Ella, Gumpingen Dollar. In Oja et Fali, Elian Ella, Gumpingen Dollar. All they touch, scorching to black the meek earth. 
and he don't win it or who lost and he don't win it or who lost girl you on top of all and he don't win it or who lost girl you on top of all a child face down in the shallows lying in the sand Lianov Bail Fui Sin Ishka Kani in Alina Sakhanov. Lianov Bail Fui Sin Ishka Kani in Alina Sakhanov. All that's left, the photo I carry next to my heart. Il Father Gum. Il fog er gram og grin graf er uber in atelvægi. Il fog er gram og grin graf er uber in atelvægi. against slander, against broken promises, 
against the denial of my humanity, against wounding, that a full life return to my homeland, so be it. I mean, so the, the collection started with these meditative poems, one of which I um, read, The Ghost of the Gadfly. And then, just as the book was getting ready to go for publication, a whole batch of poems came uh, uh, after the, the Russian in, invasion. And I wrote um, a few poems. Uh, and one is called In Odessa, If I Could Paint Love. And it's for a wonderful poet you, from Odessa called Ilya Kaminsky, who wrote a wonderful book of poems called The Deaf Republic. And um, I met him in, uh, in Cork when he was reading at the Poetry uh, Festival there. And we exchanged books and some books. It was a real thrill. I asked permission uh, for him uh, to use one of his poems <coughs> as an epigraph for the book. So, in Odessa, if I could paint love, for Ilya Kaminsky. In Odessa, if I could paint love, even though it was months ago, the sea hazed in the blue distance, the family together in the garden, the sun's yellow in our quick banter, the taste in my mouth lingers, grandfather's cool black plums picked under tranquil skies. I don't know if you remember the picture of this old woman being confronted by a, a Russian soldier near the airport when they first landed, the paratroopers first landed. And uh, this poem is also almost a found poem, um, a verbatim account of what transpired. It's called Grandmother's, The Grandmother's Sunflowers, the sunflowers being the symbol of The old lady saw the soldier. Are you one of ours? She asked. Or are you one of those invaders? Go home, grandmother, go away. Don't make matters worse. Did you say home? Ah, this is my home, understand? I tell you, boy, you go home, spare your youth, live. You're not welcome here. Go home before you die. You'll make all mothers weep. What's worse than that? Go away, go home with your weapons. You're not welcome here. You're making matters worse, grandmother, only worse. Here, she said, put these sunflower seeds in your pocket. Keep them safe. And when you're dead and buried here, they'll germinate in your grave. They'll grow a marker for your mother to find. Yes, she will come grieving, seeking answers all her life. Here, take these seeds so she can never say, we dishonored you. You're in the breath our child breathes. Her hand in mine is your hand too. I sense your footsteps beside me. Your voice in my thoughts helps. I try to stay strong and remember how now even our shadows miss you. The lists. Mornings we scan the boards, the lists of names of the missing and the dead. It is longer today. How is it possible that something so innocent as a piece of white paper can break so many hearts? I look not wanting to see, see not wanting to read, read not wanting 
but needing to know. Woman, life, freedom, after Paul Eluard, for the women of Iran. I would write three words in every children's book and leave no page blank. Let them be the first words on every child's lips. Let them be heard in every vow, on every tongue. Woman, life, freedom. I would carve these words as any lover would in the bark on the loneliest tree. Even in sand, even in snow, I would write, Woman, life, freedom. Yet write them in durable stone, 
nail them in parchment on every door, unfurl them as banners along high rising walls, announce them from steeples to the sound of peeling bells, write them in tiles, the calligraphy on golden domes, let them be added to the calls to prayer, let them take to the wind, let the words flow freely like loosened hair, women, life, freedom. These words, like Tahir's trumpet blast, will topple bastion walls. They have crossed desert wastes. They have stirred forest leaves. They travel the lengths of all rivers and carry this truth back to the seas. Woman, life, freedom. They are the wonder of nights, are birth stars in every constellation. They are the gleam of moonshine on lake water and listen. The wave's persistent whisper is, Room, life, freedom. The words settle in every nest, sing out of every bush. They are the color in every season, they are the changing seasons. They are deft as a panther's blue shadow and constant as any snow-capped mountain. They are every mood of every ocean. They are sudden like lightning and the deep thunder that follows. They are our wide fields, our horizons and our big skies. They are the breezes at dawn. They are dewdrops, delicate as bean flowers. They are the wetting rain. They are the juice in ripe fruit and the freshness of baked bread. Woman, life, freedom. This is the dream in every bed the sense before any word is spoken. The words are in familiar things, a dog's twitching ears, the thresholds of homes, they are on windowsills and round kitchen tables. On moistened lips, they are a healing kiss. Woman, life, freedom. For the sake of the fallen, for the rights of all children, let the sound of the words seep into silence. Let them. Let them become one with our thoughts. Let them become us. Let them become flesh and bone.